Hey friends, Doug with Dini in the garage. All right, we're gonna do some preventative maintenance today on the Cherokee. I thought I'd take y'all along for the ride here. Um, this weekend, I gotta do some towing with the Cherokee on the highway, so I want to change the fluid in my rear diff uh, and my transfer case, and I'm gonna do the front diff as well. Uh, what I got here is the Chrysler eight and a quarter. This process is gonna be the same for just about any diff. Um, if you're not sure about your oil capacity or what type of oil, you can go ahead and look it up online. I'll tell you right now, all Dana axles are going to do just fine with some 80-90 gear oil. Um, if you have a limited slip, you need to get uh, the right gear oil with uh, you know the limited slip additive. Um, we're working on an eight and a quarter open differential. What I've done is take out all of the bolts holding it in on Chrysler and Dana axles. They are half inch bolts. They may be half inch on Ford and Chevy and all that too. I'm not really sure. Once you get to this point, you got to wrestle the uh, diff off. Most people don't use gaskets. They use, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, you know, um, like Permatex uh, gasket maker, which means these covers are like glued on. Uh, so what you need to do is pry it off. You need to be careful though, because if you bend it up, uh, there's a good chance it will not seal again. So what I like to do, you have to have a Spill bucket ready. Sometimes some people give it a good whack up here with a hammer, but you can bend these. You can put a little ding in them. I don't like to do that. Take your time, get the edge here with a screwdriver and just start prying it up a little bit. Maybe take your BFH and smack it in there a little. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's gonna do just fine. Come on now. Come on now. Get that guy in there. See? Beautiful. All that that good milky oil. Oh man, I've never done this since I owned the Jeep, which is about six months. Looks like it hasn't been done in a while. So let that stuff spill out. Pry this bad boy off. Unleash the goodies inside. Oh, there we go. What a beautiful. What a beauty. Now some of these diffs will have, a, well, all of these diffs from the factory have a little tag that's usually bolted between two bolts on the outside of the cover, and that's going to tell you what kind of differential it is, serial number, and most importantly, uh, what the gear ratio inside the differential is. If yours still has it, mine did not, keep it. It's a good thing to have. Uh, it's a good thing for your own use, and it's a good thing for the next guy. All right, so uh, we've got the cover off. Let me go put this someplace safe, and, and we'll get into it. All right, we're going to address the cover in a minute, but first what you got to do is get off any old gasket material. It looks like this person actually did use a gasket the last time they did it. Uh, any gasket material or RTV, Permatex type stuff. For that, get yourself a razor blade. Maybe a putty knife might work. I like a razor blade though. Uh, the trick here is you don't want to make sure you don't gouge up this surface here um, because you might have trouble sealing again. So just take your time. This is by far... The most labor-intensive part of the of a diff fluid exchange. While you're in here, you want to be taking a look at your teeth. You want to be making sure that they are uh, not chipped, that they don't look ground down. You want to be taking an inventory on the inside of the case to make sure there's no uh, or not not an excessive amount of metal shavings. There's going to be some metal shavings. Anytime you open up a transfer case, a differential, there will be some metal shavings. Don't get don't get upset. Don't run for the hills. That's normal. Totally acceptable. All right, but you don't want excessive shavings. Now when you're up top here, make sure you're careful. You don't want to drop any of this garbage into your diff. The last thing you need is debris rattling around in there, rattling around in there yep. with your uh, gears. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off camera because it's real hard to work with you all right there. And then we'll go take a look at the cap. You're going to need to remove all this old gasket material. This was some kind of gnarly, looks like they used gasket and they also used RTV. The RTV the gasket on so this one's kind of a mess uh, that's just sort of the way it goes like I said this is the most labor-intensive part of a differential job is getting all this stuff off but it's it's important you have to get it all off or it won't seal properly next time so just take your time you want to scrape all this gasket material off then you're gonna want to take some paper towel and clean out the inside all right now there's gonna be sludge and what this sludge really is is uh, it's oil mixed with um, the, the metal shavings that, that do accumulate in the bottom of your uh, differential here. And again, it's not too much of a problem to have a little bit of metal shavings, but you wanna keep an eye out. Uh, if you have an excessive amount or you have big chunks of metal, you know you probably have a problem. So what I'm gonna do is finish cleaning this off and then I do something extra. Every single time I remove a diff cover, I usually paint it. Sometimes I just paint it black or gray to match the Jeep. 
sometimes I have a little fun with it. Uh, these things get real rusty and crusty and gross looking. A fresh coat of paint makes all the difference. All right, and once you have as much of the uh, RTV, old gasket material, whatever, off there as you feel you need to get off, uh, you're gonna go ahead and get some brake parts cleaner. Uh, you're gonna use it on the inside here, use it around this lip, and I'm gonna use it on this back side uh, to uh, get some of this gunk off so I can paint it. If you have a rubber uh, fill plug, make sure you take that out first. Brake parts cleaner eats right through plastic and rubber, all right? Now while you're doing this, uh, spraying this down with brake parts cleaner, you're probably gonna find some places that you thought were good enough that are not. I got a big chunk of gasket right here that I'm gonna need to get off before I can uh, put this whole thing back on. All right, after a good hour with some wire brushes and some sandpaper and some more solvents, you should be able to get all the rust scale off, uh, enough anyway to paint it. You wanna make sure you have all the grease off it and go ahead and get some uh, tractor and implement paint. Uh, this stuff's from Tractor Supply, it's about $7 a can, but it's absolutely the best. It dries real hard, uh, so it's real good for applications like this thing that's gonna be hanging under a Jeep going through Jersey winters. Uh, I'm gonna paint this thing real quick. While it's drying, we're gonna get to the um, transfer case fluid. All right, friends, we're underneath the Jeep. So here's my 231 transfer case. Uh, this process is gonna be the same for just about any transfer case you got out there. Certainly any of the NP, NV transfer cases that are in Jeeps and Chevys. What you have is a spill plug and a fill plug. And now anytime you're dealing with a transfer case, differential, transmission, anything that has a threaded fill plug, that's what you pull out first. The reason is this. If you get your spill plug out and then you find out for whatever reason you can't get this one out, you're boned. At least if I find out first that I can't get this one out, well, I can leave it, figure out what I'm gonna do, and I can still drive the vehicle. Uh, these are a, I believe they're a 10 millimeter hex head. Um, go ahead and get yourself a socket. Hex, you don't wanna be trying to do this with a, uh, with an Allen key, you know what I mean? Uh, chances are these are gonna be in there real tight, and you don't want to strip this thing out. Oh boy, let's see about this breaker bar here. Yep. Okay, maybe we'll spray a little PB on there. Give this downstairs one shot too. And let's see what we can do. All right, now these things, they do round out pretty easy. I'm not gonna lie to you. So you really wanna Oh yeah, see it's already, even with the, uh, is this the right size? Yeah, that's a 10. You can already tell, it's, it's trying to round out. I think what we're gonna do is let that PB blaster work a little bit. Oh, there it is, Never mind. Oof, I really thought that was gonna round out, which makes the day a whole lot more interesting. That's good, now we can just work it out nice and slowly. When you've got a real tough bolt like that and it's important that you don't break it, I like to go back and forth. Just work it in and out a little bit oh, to make sure that you're not gonna round it out. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, beautiful. So fill plug is officially out. There we go, that's all it is. Just that little guy, put that aside someplace safe. Now let's work on this bottom one. Now this bottom one that doesn't tend to be as difficult because it usually is sitting in a little bit of oil or something. You know, it's not just dry up there. So let's see if we can break that one loose. There it goes. And obviously we're gonna need our spill bucket. And, oh yeah, make sure your spill bucket's actually, <laughs> what a jerk. I'm covered in ATF and I hate it. It's my least favorite smell in the world. Oh, Christ. All right, I gotta go clean up and then we'll continue this dang video. Jiminy Christmas, I'm a friggin' amateur. There's friggin' ATF all over the floor where I need to be laying. It's in my friggin' beard, in my mouth a little bit. Oh, Jesus. Alrighty. Who wants to donate me a bunch of money so I can buy a lift? So I don't have to do this anymore. Anybody? Got any uh, rich uh, potential benefactors out there? Oh, it's a good point. You guys are watching a Jeep channel so chances are you're just as broke as i am with a cruddy old xj or wj in the garage all right well one thing i could tell you 
this fluid is like water you know i mean you guys know what atf is supposed to look like uh that is not it so either water got in here which i don't think is the case because atf gets cloudy when water gets in i think this is just like the factory fluid you know thankfully 231 is a strong case so what i'm gonna do is get this stuff cleaned up a bit get that uh bottom plug put back in and then i'll show you the method for getting your fluid up into there right it's worth noting that on some of these transfer cases, this spill plug is magnetized. So when you pull it out, you'll have a whole uh, little sea urchin of uh, uh, metal shavings on there. This is not one of them. On mine, I believe the magnet is internal and you have to split the case to get to it. But if you pull yours out and it's covered in metal shavings, just go ahead and wipe it off before you put it back in. All right, friends, these transfer cases take the most vile fluid in the world, ATF. I freaking hate this stuff. Hate the way it smells, hate how gooey it is. I'm currently laying in a pool of it. Uh, there are not a ton of great ways to get your fluid up into this uh, very small little hole right there. I like to use a transfer pump. You guys saw it in the last video. Uh, you get it down inside your bottle here and uh, you just pump the fluid right up into here. When it starts coming back out this top hole, you know you've got enough. Should be about, uh, I don't remember offhand. I buy two of these and you got a whole bunch left over. All right, so uh, it's not gonna be a great way to do this on the camera. I'm gonna let y'all sit there Excuse me if my hand's in the way though. I'm trying to get this done and also not lay directly in a pool of automatic transmission fluid. Alrighty, upsy daisies into the receptacle. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Give me this back. Arsha blows. And there it goes. Now we're pumping it. Oh man, now you are supposed to do this like every 50,000 miles. You're certainly supposed to do it anytime you forward tall water in your Jeep. The reason is this, there's a good chance you might be getting some water in the breathers of your differential, of your transfer case, and that's no good. Good way to tell if there's water mixed in with your oil is your oil will be milky. Uh, it's a pretty dead giveaway. If you pull, uh, uh, what's it called, diff oil, if you pull transfer case oil, ATF, and it's real cloudy and milky, you got water in there. So we killed the one jug, we'll finish this up by opening the second jug of ATF. I believe it's like two and a half pints, whatever that comes to and friggin' liters and quarts and all that. Uh, yeah, two and a half pints I believe is what these things hold. So uh, yeah, now you know. Now we wanna make sure our spill bucket's right here because very soon we're gonna be pumping and this is gonna start coming out again. And that's how you know that uh, you have filled up your transfer case. There we go. Can you all see it's starting to dribble back out there? That's how you know that you have officially filled your transfer case. All right, now that it's full, you're gonna put your plug back in. Remember, these, this is an aluminum housing. You do not need to crank this thing down real tight. Just a little snug will do. Snug it up. You'll be able to feel as soon as there's a little bit of Resistance, that's perfect. It does two things. It protects the aluminum housing and now it's not gonna be miserable for you to get to it later on. So, go ahead and clean up this. Go ahead and forget about your transfer case for another five years. Not really, 50,000 miles. That's when you're supposed to change these. Alrighty friends, the paint has had enough time to dry. It's time to continue with this project. Now rather than buying a ready-made uh, gasket, which they do sell, I am going to use some uh, liquid gasket maker, uh, you might know it as RTV. What you're gonna wanna do is put a ring on the inside of all the uh, mounting holes, not over the edge so that it's in here, but on the flat, on the inside of all these holes, and you're gonna give a little loop up around each hole just to give it a little bit of uh, extra security. It does not need to be a very wide line that you're laying down here. It's all gonna squish out as soon as you close it anyway. I've got a real old thing of RTV here, so oh, it's gonna make it a little more difficult than it needs to be, but just work your way around. You can smooth it out with your finger. A new tube of RTV is a heck of a lot easier to spread. This one's all crusty and rusty and dusty. It really doesn't matter what color you use for this application. Red is what I have on the shelf. All right, once you're sure you have it uh, applied completely in one unbroken ring and around each of the little bowl holes, you're ready to get it on the vehicle. All right, now you want to creep back up under the vehicle. You want to make sure you're putting the bulge on the diff cover 
where the ring care goes. You don't want to try to put it on upside down, though I don't think you'd be able to anyway. I'm going to sneak this thing up, get it to where it looks like it's lined up, and then start getting some bolts in. You really don't want to move it around too much because you'll smear that RTV. All right. Start working a few bolts in. And you don't want to tighten the bolts down all the way right at first. You want to get get all of your bolts in, get them snug, and then let it sit for about an hour. You want that RTV dry a bit and it's going to really turn into a proper gasket that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll get all these bolts in, get them finger tight, all right, and then leave it for a good hour, hour and a half. And then you come back, you tighten it all the way, and then we will uh, get this thing filled with fluid. Alrighty friends, let's get this put to bed. I've had this RTV sitting for about uh, an hour. And what you're going to do now is tighten it, get everything cranked down a bit, and you want to do it in an alternating pattern. So you want to crank down this one, and crank down uh, probably this guy right here. You're going to work your way around the circle like that trying to get even pressure all over. All right, so we're gonna crisscross. Same as when you tighten down anything else, tighten down head studs, tighten down a wheel. Crisscross so that you uh, seal properly. All right, once you got them all tightened down, go around in a circle, just make sure you didn't miss anything. All right, I don't know what the torque specs are on here. They don't have to be very tight. The RTV is what seals it, you know? I'm using some uh, Valvoline 8090 gear oil. Stuff works just fine. This is what I usually use. It's usually not too expensive. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fill it up. I think it takes about two and a quarter of these, if I'm not mistaken, all right? All right, can you see how it's coming out the top there now? That's your sign that it is properly filled. Take your, uh, whether you got a threaded uh, plug or uh, just a rubber one like this, pop that in. Oh, and this job is done. We're gonna clean up this oil, let this paint dry for another day before we really get her uh, into some stuff, but that's all she wrote. All right, friends, like I said, you're supposed to do this about every 50,000 miles, I think. Uh, certainly any time uh, you've had your Jeep submerged where there could be water inside your transfer case or your differential. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. I'll do my best to get back to you. Hope you found the video uh, informational, educational, maybe even a little entertaining. If you did, by all means, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.